Okay. Welcome to the next lecture of electronic measurements and instrumentation. In this video lecture, we will discuss about the CRO. We will discuss about the uh, simple CRO concept. So see here, this is the block diagram of our simple CRO. In this block diagram, here we have the CRT tube here. Here we have the CRT tube here. This is our CRT tube. This is our complete CRT tube. Okay, so this is we have already discussed, and here we have some control grids and anodes. So see here, let us identify clearly. So this is the uh, first anode. This is the first one, second one, and third one. These three are the three anodes. And this is the cathode and this is the uh, controlling grid, controlling grid and these are the horizontal and vertical deflection plates. Okay, right. So here we have a he AC heater, we have a he AC heater supply. What is the use of this one? The AC filament supply power to the CRT heaters. So the AC filament is kind of power supply is connected to the CRT heaters. So this is the CRT heater. This is the CRT heater. This is connected to the AC supply voltages. This, uh, this is uh, also provides an accurate uh, AC calibrating voltages. So it will provide to calibrate uh, different types of AC voltages which are uh, required or which are connected to our CRT. So these are the AC supply is connected to the CRT section. <coughs> next one. So see here, before going to the next one, see the block diagram once clearly. Here we have a vertical amplifier. This vertical amplifier is connected to the vertical deflection plates. And this is the horizontal amplifier. This horizontal amplifier is connected to the horizontal deflection plates. And so for, the, for this vertical amplifier, we have vertical input. For this horizontal amplifier, we have horizontal input. And this horizontal input uh, not only connected to this uh, horizontal amplifier, uh, this uh, horizontal amplifier input uh, is connected to here a sawtooth wave generator. That is the output of the sawtooth wave generator is connected to the horizontal amplifier and this sawtooth sweep generator is controlled by the sync amplifier. This sync amplifier is connected to here switch S1. Here we have two types of switches. First S1, second one S2. When the switch 1 is connected from external sync input to the sync amplifier, then this sawtooth sweep generator is connected to the, um, this horizontal amplifier. So this is the path. So see here, the path is in this way. Here we have the path. Right? So this is the path. <coughs> this is the total connected path. Path. Okay, so the external sync input to the S1 switch, S1 switch to the sync amplifier, sync amplifier to the sawtooth wave generator, sawtooth wave generator to S2 function switch, from S2 function switch to horizontal amplifier, this horizontal amplifier to the this horizontal amplifier to the horizontal deflection plates. So this is the section, and here we have vertical input section, horizontal input section and Z axis input section. These three are the direct inputs. These three are the direct inputs in this block diagram. So the right side part is completed. Now coming to the left side part of the block diagram. Here we have some AC supply. This AC supply uh, we are connected to the uh, heater of the CRT and here we have high voltage DC supply. This high voltage DC supply is connecting uh, connected to the a resistor divided network. Here R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Five resistors are available. In this five resistor, five resistors, two resistors are used for controlling the focus and intensity. <coughs> the R3 resistance is here. R3, R3 potentiometer or R3 variable resistor is used to control the focus of the 
CRT tube and R5 is used for controlling the intensity of the controlling the intensity of the CRT. So see here, here we have lot of electrons at the electron gun. From this electron gun, otherwise from our uh, electron heater, uh, lot of electrons are emitting. So these uh, uh, electrons, we can control the uh, all electrons with the help of this grid. Okay, that grid is nothing but as that grid is uh, the grid is completely connected to here R4 resistor. After this resistor, here we have one, two, three, three anodes. Uh, if the first anode is pre accelerating anode, the second anode is focusing anode, three or third one as, uh, uh, anode is uh, accelerating anode. The first anode is nothing but as pre accelerating anode. The pre accelerating anode we are using for controlling the intensity. The second anode it is focusing anode. This focusing anode is connected to the R3 poten R3 resistor, R3 potentiometer or variable resistor. Okay. So, we can control how many number of electrons we have to emit from the uh, uh, heater and how many electron has to reach the display, has the reach the target display, phosphorus screen display. Okay, and we can control their brightness, their intensity and their focusing levels also here. Okay, so this is about the resistor divider network, the resistor divider network and here low DC voltage supply, these are the sub, uh, low voltage supply circuits, we are connecting to the uh, different types of uh, uh, DC circuits which are available on the motherboard of the CRO, on the motherboard of the CRO. So this is totally the block diagram construction part. Right. Now, let us see the next one. CRT DC voltage is obtained from the high voltage DC supply through a voltage divider network from R1 to R5. From high voltages to we will get low voltages with the help of this divider network. With the help of this resistance divider network, we will get less amount of DC voltages from the high amount of DC voltages. <coughs> right. Included here, included along with this voltage divider, with this voltage divider network help, with the help of voltage divider network, the potentiometer R3, which varies the potential at the focusing electrode. So at the focusing electrode, we can vary different types of voltages. We can vary from low voltage to high voltage with the help of R3 resistance, as now we discussed. Next. Uh, now known as focus control and one which varies control grid voltage called intensity control R5. With the help of R5 resistor, we can control the control grid voltages with the help of intensity no, intensity parameter, adjustable parameter. So this is the intensity parameter. Next, capacitor C1. The capacitor C1 is used to ground the deflection plates and the second anode for the signal voltages but DC isolates these electrodes from the ground. So here what amount, what amount, what amount of the voltages we are getting at the deflection plates for those, for those voltages we need to make ground. So that for grounding purpose we are uh, using the capacitance uh, C1 capacitor. So whenever the excess amount of voltages are reaching to the deflection plates then those amount of voltages we can discharge through this capacitor C1 to the ground. This is the purpose of C1 capacitor. <coughs> Next, here we have S1 and S2 switches. Normally, S2 switch is set to the its linear position. Normally, S2 switch is connected to the linear position where linear is nothing but as sawtooth wave generator connection. This connects the sweep generator output to the horizontal input. So here, the whatever the whatever amount of the sweep input voltages are available, that voltages we can connect it to the switch and we can give to the horizontal amplifier. 
The sweep voltage is amplified before being uh, applied to the horizontal deflection plates. So before giving to the uh, voltages to the horizontal deflection plates to the horizontal deflection plates, we have to amplify it. Uh, for that amplification purpose, this sawtooth to wave output directly connect to the horizontal amplifier. Through this horizontal amplifier, we are connecting to the horizontal deflection plates. So this is about uh, the total uh, operation here. Whenever the external uh, sinking, actually the vertical direction signal and the horizontal direction signal, both the signals has to synchronize. If, uh, if you want to synchronize this vertical amount of information with the external connected uh, input signal, so that external input connect, uh, connected signal you, here you have to place. Uh, if you want to connect uh, internal input signal, Signal synchronization, you have to connect the, the switch in this position. So, this is the internal switch. This is the internal switch. This internal switch directly connected to the vertical amplifier and it will synchronize with this uh, horizontal amplifier. The vertical and horizontal amplifiers are connected when the switch S1 position is connected in this line. Okay, next. When the switch is S1 is connected, when the switch S1 is connected, it will take the signal from externally. It will take the signal externally and it will uh, check its synchronization. And uh, this is the line. Generally, this line connection we will not use in generally. Uh, that is, uh, we have some uh, uh, calibration purpose here. We have that signal. So, no, no need of that sync selector uh, uh, separate line, line signal. Okay. So, this is about the uh, horizontal uh, circuit. Uh, directions and vertical circuit directions okay right so this is the simple CRO connections here we have not uh, touched any sections just we have seen what is meant by what what are the block diagrams are available okay right next and uh, coming to that the last one s1 switch also when an externally generated whatever the topic now we discussed that information is there when an externally generated sweep is desired, S2 is connected to the external position. So whenever you require external signal sweep voltages, then you have to connect external uh, synchronous input. Otherwise, you can use internal uh, sweep circuit which will be available sort of sweep generator. S2 is connected to its external position and the external generator is connected to the input. The sweep synchronization voltages is applied to the internal sweep generator through S1 switch. If you want internal sweep generations, then you have to connect S1 switch to the internal uh, internal circuit, which selects the type of synchronization. Which type of synchronization you require? Internal synchronization or external synchronization? If you want internal synchronization, the S1 switch. The S1 switch you have to connect to the internal part which will connect it directly vertical amplifier. Otherwise, if you want external input, the S1 switch has to select the external sync input. Then this external sync input is connected to this horizontal and vertical amplifier and it will sync the signals. Okay, so this is about the CR, CR, simple CRO operation. And coming to that. Uh, high voltages coming to that uh, power supplies uh, which are having in this uh, CRT. So CRT showing power supplies in this block. So see this block, uh, complete block. Here we have different types of uh, uh, supplies. So see here. This is the cathode terminal, this is the control grid, this is the first anode, second anode, third anode and finally here we have the target screen. So here from the uh, electrons, from the uh, cathode heater, lot of electrons are generating. These are completely passed through the control grid and the first anode. These electrons are automatically distributing in all directions but uh, the second anode which will be there the uh, uh, focusing anode this focusing anode concentrated in only one direction on the, uh, towards the screen okay right so coming to here the for generally the cathode for generating the uh, uh, cathode emitter we will give 6.3 volts dc so the control grid which will be available for the control grid and the remaining sections of the electron gun we are giving nearly minus 1000 volts nearly <coughs> minus 1100 volts or minus 1200 volts 
right? Uh, this intensity control RF resistor. This is called RF resistor. For this RF resistor, we have we have an intensity control uh, position at the control grid. And next coming to that, this is minus 1200. This is minus uh, 1100. This is minus 900. Next coming to that. Uh, before minus 900, we have a resistor. This is called R3. This R3 resistor, by varying this R3 resistor, we can control the focus at the first anode. Next, minus 500 volts. Next, 0 volts. Next, plus 300 volts. So, plus 300 volts, uh, generally, we are giving to all other circuits which are available in our CRO. Okay, the intensity control controls the number of electrons by varying the control grid voltage which are available here. Okay, next, uh, coming to that focusing can be done either electrostatically or electromagnetically magnetically here. Okay, with the help of the first anode. Next, electrostatic, uh, electrostatic focusing is obtained by using a cylindrical anode which changes the electrostatic lines of force which controls the beam okay uh, the electrostatic focusing the electrostatic focusing which will be arranging the setup here is obtained by using a cylindrical anode here we will provide a cylindrical anode with the help of the cylindrical anode we can uh, change uh, the lines before uh, electrostatic lines force so which will controls him so which will controls the b wherever the b here we are controlling see here we are controlling the b by using electrostatic process electrostatic focusing methodology which will be available here the cylindrical structure of anode okay so this is about the uh, need to, uh, the crt showing different types of power supplies concept okay so this is the simple cro operation in the next class uh, we will see. So see here the points I have written here. The intensity controls the number of electrons by the varying the grid voltage. How many how many electrons we have to uh, release from this control grid that we can control by varying the intensity control voltage value. Okay. Next the focusing. Focusing can be done either electrostatically or electromagnetically. That is also we know. And electrostatic focusing is obtained by using a cylindrical structure, cylindrical anode, which can change the electrostatic lines of force, which controls the beam. So, with the electrostatic or electromagnetic, we can control the different types of voltages of the beam. Right? Right. In the next class, we will see the vertical amplifier concept. Okay. Thank you.